Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be going through Webflow. We're gonna be showing you all of the ins and outs on how you can start building a website today on Webflow. I'm gonna be taking you through my honest opinions as someone who's used Webflow for many years. I've gone through many iterations of Webflow, and I'm also gonna show you some examples of what people have built using Webflow. So without any further ado, let's get started. If you are looking to get started with Webflow, if it's something you're genuinely serious about and you wanna build a website, click the link down below, the top link in the description. You can go ahead and create a free account today. Uh, I'm gonna go through the plans and pricing in just a minute uh, and I'll take you through all of that and what I recommend for people, but we'll just do go through the uh, example websites to start off with. Now, this is the first website that I wanted to show you. The reason for showing you this website is it gives a very clear idea of the power of Webflow. What I mean by that is the uh, features that you can do. For example, the animations, you can see how that all faded in. Uh, when you hover over a button, you can change the color, you can zoom things out, uh, and obviously the fade in options as well. One of the biggest reasons people use Webflow is because it allows them to separate themselves from the rest of the competition. Now, if you're looking to create an online business, whether it's an e-commerce store or a blog, or even just a B2B company, and you need a website to display your services, Webflow is probably the best route that you can take. If we look at competitors out there like Wix or Squarespace, or even Shopify, which isn't necessarily built for blogs, you can see uh, there is a huge benefit of using Webflow because of the customization uh, element of it. Now, the good thing about Webflow is you can basically build from blank all the way up to your final product. That being said, it does take a much longer time to work out how to do it. There is a bigger learning curve to using something like, like Webflow in uh, comparison to things like Wix, whereas with Wix, you just create an account, it creates a website for you, and all you do is you just add in the text and the images. It's very, very simple. But if you're looking for something a bit more unique to stand out from your competition, Webflow is the way to go. And that doesn't mean you need to build something from scratch every single time with Webflow. You can either use a template that you've built yourself so you can duplicate, or you can go ahead and purchase or use a free template under the Webflow uh, banner that's already been created just to get you started. And I always recommend to anyone who's getting started with Webflow to go down the template route, give themselves at least 10 hours of editing and messing around within the Webflow editor to get used to everything before they then dive into their initial first project, just because it can become frustrating if you don't understand the tool for Webflow. So if you are interested in how you can use Webflow and want a longer tutorial video, leave a comment down below in the comment section if that's something you're interested in and if enough of you are interested in a tutorial video then I can always go ahead and film one of those for you guys. Um, so if we just keep sort of scrolling through you can see how you can change things like the background lighting, you can change different colors uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do uh, within Webflow that you wouldn't be able to do with other platforms. So this is a very strong example of where they've put a lot of effort into the animation side of things. Now we're going to look at an e-commerce example. A lot of people who follow me on YouTube are people who are involved in e-commerce and they're looking for uh, a new way of branding out their store without paying for a three to $500 Shopify theme, which let's face it still looks very similar to a lot of competition. Now, the good thing about Webflow is you can create an e-commerce store. Now, it isn't as good as Shopify's e-commerce platform, but in terms of the customization of it, it's way, way better, it's leagues ahead than any of its other competition out there. So you can see here, this is an example store, and you can see they've got their featured products. They've included uh, animations where you have uh, the zooming effect when you hover over it, which you can't do unless you pay for a theme in Shopify. Um, and then obviously they've got some different uh, different bits and pieces going on. The good thing about this store here is it's very different to any of its competition. If you're trying to brand yourself out, you need to make yourself look unique. You need to make yourself look different. But more importantly, for anyone who visits your website, they've got to get the impression that you spent a long time developing it. And if you spent a long time developing and putting money into the business, then the business must be a much larger, stronger business. So it's that perceived perception that you get from using Webflow that you don't get from any other platform. So we just click on the shop now button. I'm gonna show you one of the product pages. This is obviously a catalog page which has been created. And I'll go through the pages section in just a minute with the back end editor as well. But you can see here, everything works as you would expect. If I want to add the extra small to cart, you can obviously change the quantity. You can click add to cart. It will open a cart and then obviously it will go to the checkout page. Now, because this is a template page, the checkout page is actually dis disabled. But obviously if you created your own, then obviously it would all be set up and ready to go for you. 
So you're probably thinking now at this point, okay, Webflow sounds incredibly powerful. I can do a lot of cool things with it, but is it actually right for me? Is it gonna to be too much effort? So let me just show you what the backend editor looks like. This is the editor for a website that we run in our company. It's called Cartably. It's a new software product that we are releasing. And I actually got my brother to build this website. The reason for this is he has no experience with Webflow. I wanted to see how long it would take him to build a very simple landing page for our B2B business. Uh, and he whipped this up in about an hour and a half, two hours, obviously excluding the creation of these elements, images that he built obviously in Photoshop. Um, and you can see the power of Webflow. It's very easy and very quick to get set up. You can see if I just scroll through, you've got images, you've got text, uh, everything that you'd expect from a normal website, but obviously it means you can put things in the positions that you want them all to be in. So let's get started on how things would actually work if you created an account today. So the good thing about Webflow is everything is contained within sections or boxes. You have to think about your development as a massive box with multiple boxes within them. So the first thing is a section. A section is essentially the big folder that contains everything else. And the best way to describe it is if we look at this example here, where we have this blue section here, and then this white section, these are individual sections. This white bit is section one, and this blue bit is section two. If you wanted to have your website split up into different areas that have different information in them, sections are the best way of doing that. And that means you can obviously change the background of this section without influencing this section up here. The next thing within that is you want to create a container. The container will basically contain all of the information that you want to hold within that section. In this case, we've created one big central block. So we have one container and you can see here, this is the container. And within the container, we are holding the text. That is the headline, the paragraph, multiple columns, and also an image as well. So you can see once you've got the container, you just add everything else to that. And if you click on the plus button here, you have a huge amount of options of what you can do. So you can add in columns, for example, like these three here. Uh, you can add in grids. So if you're a photographer and you're creating a portfolio and you wanna add in images in a grid section, then obviously you can use this grid tool. And the cool thing about the grid tool is in the responsive mode, when you go onto mobile, it will automatically take the two by two and it will stack them on top of each other. So you'll have a whole vertical column of images. And we'll get onto responsive design in just a minute. The next thing is obviously you can add things like buttons, you can add lists, uh, multiple text blocks, but also images, video. So you can actually custom embed a video or you can upload and uh, use a YouTube video link. Uh, you can do different input forms. So if you're building a lead generation business and you wanna uh, get people to input their information, and then obviously on the back end, you can either send that to a custom CRM or that data will save within Webflow. Uh, you can also add things like drop downs and a huge amount of other things as well, different social buttons and whatnot. So there's a huge amount of things you can actually do. Anything that you wanted to add to a website, basically you can add it in Webflow. The other thing which I wanted to mention really quickly before we get onto the responsive mode is the animation section. So if we head over to this lightning bolt here, you get interactions. And essentially what interactions are, are what happens when an event occurs. So for example, we have the page load trigger. You can see here, I've just done some editing just to show you. If the page has been scrolled to a certain point, you can allow a certain action to happen. For example, you can say, if you know, page is scrolled, you can have the item fade in or fade out. Uh, same thing with the element trigger. So for example, a button, if you wanted to hover over the button and change the color, you can have an element trigger being mouse clicked or mouse hovered, for example. This is basically a good introduction on how you can start to add animations and sort of create a little bit more um, of a lively experience on your website for the user. Uh, and it's a very powerful way of taking your website from a very static image to something that's much more interactive that's gonna set you apart from your competition. All of these things obviously you cannot do within any other platforms or if you can, you can't do them to the level of customization that you can do within Webflow. So that's the first thing I wanted to go through with Webflow. The second thing was the responsive design. A lot of websites will take your laptop or desktop design and they will automatically convert it into mobile. Now, the problem with that is a lot of things don't look good or don't work in mobile. So developers will want to create their own separate mobile page, which is very difficult with competitors like Wix and Squarespace and even Shopify. 
Good thing with Webflow is you can actually create your own separate design on mobile. So for example, on my mobile feed, if I decided actually I want to move things around, I can edit it, I can delete images, I can change the order of things without actually editing my original laptop or my desktop design, which means when I open it on desktop, it'll look a one way. And then when I open it on mobile, it'll look a different way. Uh, and if you are into e-commerce, you'll know hugely how much that can affect your conversion rates, uh, just landing page design and making sure everything's laid out correctly on mobile uh, is a huge part of getting high conversion rates and that's something you have a lot of control over. So if you are involved in e-commerce and you want to see if uh, Webflow is a good option for you for e-commerce, uh, my first answer to that is uh, yes, it's very good if you're looking to brand out your store. If you have a store that's already working and you want to transition it to a new store, then I would start working on a design on Webflow. And then obviously I would, once I'm done, I would move the traffic over to Webflow. Everything works the same. You can uh, use Stripe to process your payments. It's the same as Shopify payments, just uh, it's a 2% transaction fee rather than a 3% through Shopify. So it's actually cheaper to do it on Webflow. And you can see here, if you click on pages, when you create an e-commerce site, you will have multiple pages. So you can see here, we have a um, homepage, an about page, a contact, and multiple other pages. If you're doing it for e-commerce, you'll have an add to cart page, you'll have a checkout page, a contact us page, uh, and you can have multiple different types of pages. I always recommend to someone who's starting in e-commerce to either use a template uh, or watch a lot of tutorials first because you don't want to screw this up. You want to make sure you have all the relevant pages to make sure everything works correctly. Okay, finally, the moment you've probably all been waiting for is the pricing. How much does it cost to set up a website on Webflow? So we're gonna get started off with just the general site plans. This is for people who want to create a portfolio or a blog, and they wanna just get started on Webflow. Then for you, it's $15 per month. You can get started for free, but I recommend everyone does actually upgrade to the basic plan. The reason for this, you'll notice on the starter plan, you can't actually link your own custom domain. So you will have a .webflow.io domain. So that will be, uh, for example, cartably.webflow.io. Whereas for my company, I wanted to actually have my own custom domain link. So when people search for my domain, my website comes up first. And that is obviously www.cartably.io rather than having the Webflow subdomain in there. So obviously if you want that, you're gonna to have to upgrade to the basic plan for only $15 per month. Now if we compare this plan to competitors such as Wix and Squarespace, both of which cost 10 pounds each per month, if we convert that to US dollars, it's about 14, $13.50. So we're pretty much looking at exactly the same pricing as we are for our competitors, but we get a lot more control over what we're building and we can basically build anything we dream up at any time. Now, if you're looking to go a bit more advanced and you want to add in custom CMS, so that is uh, a bit more of the developer custom code, then uh, you want to go for the CMS plan uh, and you can get 2000 CMS. Uh, I can't give you a huge amount of information on that. I would say do some more external research uh, or if you have a developer that you want to hire to actually build your website, talk to them first about what plan best suits your business. Okay, and now for the e-commerce plans. Like I say, if you guys wanna get started, by the way, click the top link down below in the description and you can get started today for whatever plan you choose. Uh, if you wanna go for the e-commerce plans, I recommend you just get started with the standard plan. Now, this is slightly more pricey than its competitors, and this is one of the reasons people start to delay with their decision with Webflow. If we compare it to someone like, like Shopify, who charged $29 a month, this charges an extra 11, 12, $13 per month than you would for Shopify. However, you do actually get a 2% transaction fee, whereas on Shopify, it's a 2.9%, so you are actually saving money on all of your transactions. You can add up to 500 products or items. These are variants or different products, but you are limited to $50,000 in annual sales volume. That being said, if you're doing over $50,000, you can probably afford $84 per month to upgrade uh, to $200,000 in annual sales volume, and then obviously $235 per month for unlimited. But don't forget, once you upgrade, you also get 0% transaction fees. So for only $84 a month, you'll be losing a lot more than that in transaction fees with someone like Shopify or Squarespace. 
Now, in terms of the back end side of things with uh, Webflow for e-commerce, it isn't as powerful as the CRM that you get with Shopify, but it is a lot better than it used to be in the past. There's a lot more control over what you can do with processing orders and everything like that. If you want to see more information like that, leave a comment down below and I can always do a video on the e-commerce side of things for Webflow. Now, you can just create product pages, you can create uh, checkout pages and everything is run through Stripe as well. So it's all integrated uh, and very easy to use. So I recommend if you're interested in getting started with Webflow, you dive in for $42 a month, you're paying an extra $13 over you would with Shopify, but you can create a very branded custom design store that's just for your business and sets you apart from your competition. So if you're serious about growing your business, Webflow is probably the way to go for you in the future. So that's everything for today's video. Like I said, if you are interested, click the top link down below in the description. You can create your free account now. You can get started. Uh, and obviously, if you upgrade, then um, uh, I go for the recommendations that I gave you. If you've got any extra questions, leave a comment down below and I will probably end up filming a tutorial video for Webflow for all of you as well. So I will see you in the next video.